you know, obviously I know it's very public that I was interviewing for the GM job. And so, you know, not getting that was a disappointment, uh, but I was still very excited to uh, join the organization. Very excited about, you know, through that process, getting to know Sandy, getting to know Steve Cohen, um, very excited about where, how they were positioned and, and what they were all about. I, we, we aligned very well on values uh, in terms of organizational values and kind of some philosophies. Um, so I was very excited to join, even make a lateral move to jump from a place where I was really happy and comfortable and been for over 17 years. So it took a lot for, for me and for my family to, you know, to make this decision to kind of disrupt our lives and take a chance by coming, coming to the Mets and, but it's something we're really excited about. Um, and then, yeah, so started in one role and then obviously things changed and that's, you know, unfortunate. One of the reasons I, I joined the Mets is obviously I had a long professional relationship with, with Jared and he's a good friend of mine. Um, and so obviously it's unfortunate what happened there. And so then, you know, my role changed again. Um, but I'm eager to step up and do whatever it takes to help the organization. That doesn't change my mindset. It was always that when I joined, <clears throat> it's just a, a slightly different role now. Yeah. We really like JD Davis. Um, you know, he's, someone that can really hit and um, you know, obviously we can have him under control for a while. He's a very valuable player to our organization. So, you know, I don't see, I know there's been a lot of rumors out there. I mean, we're going to always look for ways to improve the team in any way we can, but I'm, f we're fully comfortable with going into the season with JD Davis. I definitely subscribe to the uh, never can have too much pitching cliche. Um, you know, I've seen that um, in my years at the Red Sox were the, the fastest way for your season to uh, go sideways or, or backwards um, is to have, you know, run out of, not have quality pitching depth or to have too many injuries there. You always have to expect some level of injuries there. So um, increasing our depth is always something that I, th I think we'll be pursuing. It doesn't mean we're not happy with the guys we have. I am happy with the guys that we have and um, excited to see them in camp uh, very shortly. Culture in general is very important to me. Um, you know, when I said earlier that during the interview process for the GM job, we talked a lot about organizational values. We talked a lot about culture. Um, you know, I viewed that as an opportunity to present how I view uh, a, good, a good culture in baseball, an effective culture. Um, and it was really, here's, here's how I, I look at things and wanted them to be able to see if that aligned with their thinking. And then, you know, they could talk about theirs and, and we were very much aligned, as I mentioned before. And so how does that happen? It's a lot of investment of time of conversations. You know, one, it is, you're right. It's, it's very inefficient um, in COVID times to have those conversations. It's not ideal. I'm very excited that I'm in Florida. they will be, you know, in a distanced and safe way, more conversations if I can actually recognize anybody with their masks on, but we're, I'm excited to be around the people. I mean, I haven't, I've never met uh, since being here. I haven't met Sandy in person uh, or Steve Cohen. And um, you know, it's just, it'll be nice to, to be able to have a little bit more of those conversations still be challenging because you can only, you know, be so close and have so many people together, but a lot of it can be done outside here, which is great, but yeah, it's investing a lot of time and, you know, it's a lot of Zooms, a lot of phone calls, you know, really getting people to kind of open up and share their thoughts. Uh, people that have a lot of institutional knowledge about things here, what worked well, what hasn't worked as well, where there are opportunities to improve, uh, getting, if you know, first learning of, about the, the hist recent history of, of the culture here and um, how we could get better. And I think we brought in a lot of people at uh, leadership levels that, are going to be really good at moving that forward. Yeah, I've always looked at those. The best time to do that is in spring training, um, and and I think we'll we'll have those conversations. Uh, you know, and we've had conversations internally, and but as far as you know, and I know Sandy was talking about. Obviously, we acquired Francisco with the hope of having him here longer than one year. So we're definitely we 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 want to have those conversations. The focus has been on building the best roster we can for for 2021. And, you know, that's obviously, that could still be ongoing, but that's an important thing for us to at least talk to players about the potential for those types of deals. It's never done, but I'd, I, no, we're not done.
we want to do some other things. Um, will they, will everything align and those things happen? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I'm, I told Sandy that I'm happy with the team as is, or, but if we can make improvements, we'll make improvements. So, um, we're definitely not done trying to make improvements to the team. Mm -hmm.